Hey everybody, I have a special guest with me today. Catherine, can you say hi? Say hi. Hi. Do you want some goldfish? No? I can't believe it. Goldfish? Hey everybody. How are you today? I am um, babysitting. <laughs> My daughter is at a photo shoot. Hey, Charlotta. So I've got Catherine here with me. So hopefully she will be going up to watch TV in a minute until somebody comes home to get her. Hey, Laura. You want another one? She will chow down on this whole thing. Hey, Kathleen and Jerry. Karen, how are you? Yes, she is a good girl. Hey, Lisa. So we just went and visited my mom. Hi. Oh, she says, say hi. Hi, friends. Hey, Judy. How old are you, baby girl? Are you two? We went to Joanne's today. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to put her upstairs in a minute. Hopefully. Oh, she's rolling the big shot. Hi, Andrea. So today we are going to uh, take a look at, <laughs> she's saying hi, uh, take a look at the Big Shot uh, Plus new die called the Full Size Journal. Hey Leslie, how is everybody? What a weekend. Oh, it was great. We went up to the, um, <laughs> we went up to Michigan. Hi. And uh, we had a great show and um, it was, I think it went really well. I was happy to meet some of you guys that I see. Yes, isn't that good one, Joanne? Okay, let go, let go, baby girl. No, nope. nope, that's not for you, kiddo. Here, you can have goldfish, okay? She's double-fisted. Hi, Angie, how are you? Hi, Jane. So, uh, she's a little antsy, time for dinner, but um, her mom is getting stuff. Yes, she is a future crafter, I know. So she, she is rolling the handle of the Big Shot Plus if you could believe it. She instinctively knew how to do that. So, hi. hi, they're in there, baby girl. Say hi. Hi to my friends in there. Can you see them? <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on. She's been shuttled around all day. Oh, we're, we're playing uh, horsey. <laughs> so anyway, um, in a minute, I'm gonna show you this. I have a bottle for her waiting up the stairs, so hopefully she will do that. Yeah. But she she was gonna say hi, and she did. Okay, you ready? Should we go upstairs? Okay, I will be right back. Somebody was supposed to be here to get her, but okay. Okay, she's watching her show. <laughs> she's like my grandmother watching her show soap operas, but it's Coco Melon. If anybody has seen that. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to continue on and hope that, uh, sorry about that, uh, <laughs> hope that she can, you know, hang out by herself, but we'll find out. Anyway, yes, yeah, she is a great little girl. She went and saw my mom. They had Malamars together, which are a little kind of cookie. <laughs> and, uh, they just had a nice time together. So, hi, Allison. Hey, Frederica. Do we have anybody new here? Because um, I know that, that we have some new friends from Creating Craft. Oh, really? Yeah, it is cute. Hello? Oh, my husband's home. Yes. Okay. The troops have arrived. <laughs> so, Anyway, um, hey dear, Hello. hey, I'm live, so um, she's upstairs watching TV. Oh. Yeah, thank you. So anyway, all right, so we've got a fun, quick project. Um, I'm sorry, I missed that. You're from Canada, Linda from Ohio. Hi, Linda and Maggie. Hey, everybody. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this uh, full-size journal which is really a cool, versatile, 
fun journal because it's so big. Aw. Yeah, she was a baby last time she was on. Hey, Sandy. Sandy was there in Michigan. Yeah, we had Laura Zablewski. She did have a little um, problem um, getting there. So she, I saw Laura the second night, but uh, we had members of the fan club. We had Brenda and Sandy and some new friends that you know we'll be talking about, Katrina and Tina and Sue. And then um, the next night I had dinner with Laura. So we did meet up with some fan club members. That was a lot of fun. And they came to the booth. It was great. It was so nice to meet in person. The only thing about the trip was on the way home, I, ugh, I left late because I had, I closed out three restaurants. Um, and so the last night I was with Taylor from Sizzix and I, um, could not find a hotel and I wound up sleeping in my car. So that wasn't fun, but what are you going to do? Anyway, next time I'm bringing a memory foam mattress pad, mattress thing. So, hey Glum, how are you? I'm headed up this weekend, Glum. It's the big tag sale at my mom's house. So I'll have to put that out there if anybody wants to come. Hey Mitziana. All right, so let's get going on this. Um, one thing, when I was at the show I'm gonna show you when I turn the camera down because it's easier to see but I went to one of the booths called inspiration and bloom and it's a beautiful it looks like an amazing place that we could have a retreat guys they hold 24 people oh good Lisa Lisa's going to town cranking cranking them out uh, anyway they had some of that paper um, sorry I had a phone call about my mom's estate sale um, they had this, uh, it's called Craft Consortium paper, and I, I got four packs of it. It's expensive, but it's just so pretty. So I'll show you this when we turn the camera down. And Angela, I got a package from you, but I'm going to open it on the next show because there's so much going on here, okay? But this is really what perfect for a journal. So I'm going to use this in the project today. Okay, yeah, it's beautiful. Really, it's different. And I have three other ones that I got too, so I'll show you them in a minute, but just go through them quickly. I also have samples to show you of other options of using that journal. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's a good one. It's smaller than the others, but it just seemed to fit exactly what I wanted to do with it. So we're gonna talk about the journal. I have a list of tips and things to remember when you're using it. But um, I'm going to show you some samples here while we're getting ready to turn the camera down. Look at this one from Lisa. Isn't this gorgeous? This is like a um, gel. It's, she made it on the gel press and used stencils and stamps. It is so cool. And it says something's fishy. And she's got fish and then a cat with a fish in his mouth. Yeah, that didn't go well. All right, here's one from Tanya. Now this one is just a cover. I didn't put books in all of them because um, they were heavy, but you can see the different things you can use to string it. Now she covered the inside and outside of the book. This is made out of mat board and she's it's just really pretty um, colors and papers. So you can you know feature your special colors. Your hearts won't work, but you're sending them. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is from Julia. I love this one. This is uh, Bugs, you know, so then she kind of colored the inside with inks. Hi, Sandy. Thank you. Hi, Debbie. Here's one from Pam, and I don't think I showed this yet. It was in the Create and Craft, and thanks to everybody who came to that, and thank you, Sharon, for doing such a good job and selling out. That was amazing. So Pam made kind of a junk journal insert book that she's got you know the well the pages have lines but the outside is collaged and decorated so so pretty isn't that cool i love that paper so you can use paper you don't have to use them on all of your pages but you can use them to decorate the insert covers which is almost as good and then use plain pages inside so many options I can't even tell you but one thing I really liked was this little handle so you can carry it you know with the little closure like little suitcase 
And then I think I've showed Maggie's a couple times. This is a mini album that she made that's got all kinds of pockets and tucks and waterfalls and fun things inside. And you can go to the blog, EileenHull.com, and you can see lots of these samples. Well, they will be coming up. We'll be showing them this month. So if you're looking for ideas, uh, go over to the blog. We have three to five um, new projects every week on the blog at EileenHull.com. All right, I got to put these down. I don't want to wreck them. And then uh, here's a couple that I made. And this is the leather one. I'm sure you've seen that a lot. It's on the packaging. I love that. And then this one is one that's made out of mat board and it's stitched around the edges. And I sewed and glued the, um, this is the Sizzix surfaces, the new colors. Aren't they pretty? So I kind of like this for a rainbow journal. And then I just covered my, it's kind of generic, but you could dress it up as you wanted. So as you can see, plenty of things you can do with this. It is big. I mean, it is. So I'm just going to show you some of the things that I have found along the way. I'm sweating, guys. It, it's hot here, and I had a child on my lap, and <laughs> plus I'm just not quite ready. Um, yes, the surfaces. The thing about them is they're only six inches wide. So that was how I put the, got those pretty colors on the cover. I cut them into strips and stitched them on. So um, just a couple questions that you guys have been asking. And then I am going to announce the prize winners from our last release party. So I don't forget to do that. Maybe we could do that now. What do you think? Should we announce them now? Let's just do it. Okay. So this is for the people who watched and commented on the blog, the YouTube, and the Facebook video where we did our launch. Okay, so for Facebook, we have Christy Sparks. Yay, yay, yay. Congratulations, Christy. On the blog hop, we have the winner is Lori Manicho, and Lori's a longtime viewer. And then on YouTube, we have Brenna Colas or Colhasi. K-O-H-L-A-S-E, A-S-E, yeah. So if you are a winner, um, please message me with your mailing address. And I will say, as far as getting the dyes uh, resupplied, I'm getting a shipment on Thursday, um, but I'm not going to get the, the full-size journal, this one, or the notebook. Those are still on the boat, but they're supposed to come get delivered on Friday, the 15th. So hopefully uh, we will get them next week. They're going to get them out to me priority. So if you didn't get one yet and you want one, hang on. They're coming. If the port in Los Angeles is just so backed up. These, you know, they're just sitting there on the boats and they can't get them unloaded fast enough. So uh, they, but they are on their way. Um, the other thing is I wanted to show you, oh, here, here are a couple things and maybe I'll just wait until we turn the camera down, but I wanted to show you options for filling the books, um, for making insert books. Um, I have a list here. Hang on. Um, I want to talk about what machines work with the die, uh, some tips for using the die, elastic books, uh, the spine, where to find materials, machines, and all of that stuff. So we'll get to that. Maybe I'll just turn the camera down now and we can get right into that. What do you think? Let me get this up on the screen so I don't miss any of your comments. And let's see if I can do that. If it's playing, that would be good. Mm, yes, there we go. Okay. All right, good. I have you on there. You bought the journal die. Your Big Shot Plus was broken. Oh, no. So you brought a pre-loved one without a handle off eBay. Looks like you found an e Are you cannibalizing the, the Big Shot Plus, Jane? <laughs> All right. Well, however you get it, you know, use what works. 
All right, I think I'm ready. I'm gonna turn the camera down and then we're gonna just go through and we're gonna put a book together. I'm gonna give you my tips. We're not gonna get into really specific things unless I see that you have a question. If you, if you do have a question, just put it in the chat and I will go back tonight and look through and try to answer it, okay? I may answer it during the video, so, you know, just hang in there and see if um, I answer it on the way, okay? Sorry, he's seeing my dirt messy, messy room. Um, my husband had Catherine here for the weekend, so he is, he's got her again, but uh, God bless him. Okay, let me just make this bigger if I can see. Yeah, okay. No, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, okay, well, I can kind of see your questions. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. I don't see the questions, though. Shoot. Okay, well, I might have to go back to another view, which I don't know how to do. They keep changing stuff. Ugh. Anyway, all right, well, let's do it, and then I will come back and try to find you again, okay? I'm just going to go straight through and, and just talk this through. Okay. Here is the die. Now you might notice these little weird things here. Um, this is Fun Foam, and I know if you've watched for a while, you'll know what this is. Um, what I do, and this is not, you know, okay by Sizzix. This is just what I do to help me. Because when you have all these little holes and you have tight corners and things like that, the mat board wants to stick in it. Um, and that's one thing I should talk about. This is a scoreboards die. It is meant to be cut from thick material like mat board, chipboard, leather, um, fabric, felt, thick, thick stuff, uh, up to a sixteenth of an inch. So that we're going to cut mat board today. We're going to cover it with paper. But this is what I do to help these little pieces pop out after I die cut it. Um, you can spend a lot of time, if these get packed in, these little holes, you know, the mat board just sticks, 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 and you're like digging them out. So I empty my little holes after pretty much every time I make a journal. So that's ro rolling it through twice. I pick them out and, you know, it's fine. Nothing gets jammed down there. Uh, it's not a problem. So that's what I do. That's why they look funny. The other thing that I've done on here is I've printed front and back, and you'll see why. We're going to do a paper that has a directional print on it, a text. Uh, it's this piece right here. So I'm going to show you how um, to use your die to help you remember how to line it up right. Okay, so see, if we did it that way, it would not work. So I have two pieces. I cut them to size to cover my mat board. And we'll do that. These are extra. Um, so I'm going to use my easy cut adhesive to adhere my paper to my mat board. And we'll do that in a second. Um, maybe I'll show you those other journals. Except this thing is so heavy. <laughs> But let's just check this out. Okay, this is the craft, it's like a Christmas kind of um, berry or leaf pattern. Really pretty. I thought it's a nice background, you know. If you would put that on a book, you would have plenty of room to add other things. And since it's, it's a repeating pattern, you're not really covering anything too much. You know what I mean? So that's pretty. And then I got another Christmas one, which is just so, so cool. And then these you can fussy cut if you believe in such a thing. You know, get out your scissors. And I like the background, the colors in this. Really pretty. So I was talking with Abby, who's the owner of Inspiration and in Bloom, where I bought this. And she said she would try and get these up on her website if you wanted to go to her website to find these. Now I did pay 35, well they had a show special, but look at this. Some of these are like glossy. Do you see how they're like, um, like a sticker almost? They're really different. Uh, but this was like $35 if you paid full retail, you know, not at a show. 
but like it's like the thing about it is I like every page, you know, which you don't always get to find. Here's one more, which I got mainly because of my daughter who has chickens and ducks and farmy kind of things. I thought that would make a cute journal for her. It also has this page of butterflies and some flowers and just kind of garden varnish kind of look at that one isn't that cool it's a foil so i wish i could see your comments anyway these are just really pretty so if you want to pick some up um you can go to inspiration in bloom i n n bloom and uh see what you can find there so let me just see if i can go back and get this uh, with, oh shoot, I lost myself. Wait a minute, that's not good. Hang on, I'm, I know I'm in here. <laughs> so, anyway, this is what we're going to use today. Yep, I found myself, hooray. All right, I see your comments as they're coming up. It's just a weird view, but yeah, aren't they pretty? Okay, go to a bike shop. Petal fits. Oh, wait a minute. Target has... Okay. You guys are... <laughs> you're off on a tangent. All right. So let's cut our page, our book covers. Let me just go over a couple more things, which is... Um, all right. Let's just do this first. Sorry. I'm a little discombobulated here. Having Catherine kind of threw me for a loop. All right, so let's get our, let's get this stuff, oh, man. All right, let's put our paper on our mat board first, okay? Now this one, I'm using a mat board edge that has the color, you know, on it, or the, um, you know, the information, like the UPC code and stuff, I'm going to cover that and put paper over it so you don't see it. And then the other side is just a nice white or whitish. So I'm going to cover that. We're going to do two sides. Hopefully I can get this right. I'm having a baby brain today. <laughs> She's been so good, but you know, a lot. I gotta say, my husband did great. He had her from Friday afternoon because my daughter and my other two daughters and their cousins went off to the beach and left the kids home. And I wasn't here, so my husband got Catherine. What a man. I mean, he had his own four kids, but it's been a while and they are busy, let me tell you. Okay. So I'm just covering this with double-sided adhesive. And if it wrinkles a little, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. We're going to cover it with paper anyway. This is always the hardest part, separating it. Usually there's like a little edge because I cut it, so... So you could use other things. Some people use matte medium. Some people use other kinds of tape. I like this because it does stick really well. And, you know, if I wasn't covering it with paper, I might be covering it with metal or who knows. So I just like something that I know is going to work. So, and if it doesn't come up right away, just burnish it a little bit. Can you guys see this? Wait a minute. Let's see if I'm in the frame here. So now I can see your comments, but I can only see comments or whether I'm in the frame. <sighs> Hope you guys had a good weekend. It was so nice seeing everybody from the fan club and meeting new people. All right, so I'm going to cover both of them the same, and then we're just going to turn them. Oh, this has the... Uh, of edge here. All right, so I'm just going to lay this down and take this off and lay that down. It's getting cooler here. When I was sleeping in my car, I'll tell you what, it was uh, a little chilly. 
I should have covered my feet up with my pajama, flannel pajama pants, but I didn't want to get out after I got comfy. <laughs> All right, so we use this side. We could have used that. Actually, I like that one better, but I want them to be the same, so. All right, so that's a little off. You're not going to know because it's kind of skewed anyway. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is cut this. So I want to show you how I lay it out on the die, all right? So you can see here I said front. So this means if it's this is the front, then I want the direction of the page going like this okay so I'm gonna cover this up and make sure I'm covering all of my areas of the die and oh, one of the things I wanted to talk about were was the different machines that work uh, this die works with and I have a list but after I cut this I will tell you okay because there were a lot of questions about this at the show and on our page. So if you haven't joined the Eileen Hall fan club, you might want to do that because we have a lot of new stuff going on there and lots of good samples and um, chat about this die. So if you're interested in it, uh, come on over to the Eileen Hall fan club. Just make sure you answer the questions, okay? Because if you don't, we hold you in the group and we give you a chance. We give you a week, but if you don't answer them, we, we move you along, I'm sorry to say. Okay, so let's take a look at this. All right, so see, now here's our spine, and this is just the exact right thing that we want. Okay, it's, that's what's going to be on the front. And now I'm going to, all right, and see these things popping out? I can just brush them aside. And they don't go into the, I don't have to pick them out with my die pick, which I'm very excited about. Okay, now I'm going to turn this, all right, and it says back. So I'm going to take my next page, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay that down on my die, and that is going to reverse it so that when we put the spines together, they're facing the right direction. It only took me, like, 10 years to figure that out, and it wasn't even me. It was my friend Russell, and we were at a store, and I was teaching, and he's like, everybody's lining it up wrong. So we wrote it on the dies, and it was perfect. So that's why don't be afraid to write on your dies or, or use them um, to help you remember how to do it because they're tools, and, you know, you need to use them the best way you can. All right, so here's our second cover. So we're moving right along. And we cut out two sets of little extras here, but we can use them wherever we want. Uh, and maybe I should tell you what they are, if you haven't already guessed. Um, all right, so you have this here. This is like a label, so you could, you know, use that on the front. There is this piece, which is... A decorative, uh, really, I designed it to be like a charm holder. Um, I'll show you on here. I, I just um, used like a metal stamp on here. You could also use it as a plaque, you know, and just put it in. So this is really handy. I mean, I am so glad I have that. And then there's kind of a mini one. It's the same shape, but that is to hold your little latch in. And when we put it on, I kind of scrunch it up a little so that this can poke through. So anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. But here's the little one, you know, for the, the latch piece. Been holding. Sorry, that was my mom calling. <laughs> this place is nuts okay so these are the extra pieces I had room on here so I just thought add them on but see none of the these little you can pick them off with your finger which is way better than having to take your die pick and dig in there and all that so I mean it is a new die but still I'm sure after I cut 200 of these they're they're going to be sticking in there but for now they're not so um, let me see if I can see your comments. Just pop some double-sided adhesive on the back. 
Thanks everyone. Foam. F okay. So you were asking about that. Yeah. So it's fun foam. It's just like this stuff, you know, that you can get at anywhere. Joann's it's, you know, it's not that thick, but it's thick enough to make things pop out. So what I do is put a little double sided adhesive, my, you know, easy cut adhesive. I put that on the back. I cut the shape, you know, of where I want it to be. Let's just say, you know, where the holes are and trim it down if you want, you know, but it doesn't hurt anything to have it there. And then, you know, peel this back off and just stick it down. And uh, periodically I will take it out. Sometimes these little holes, the, the foam pieces will get picked out by mistake and then you have to do it again, but it's no big deal. Um, just, you know, do it when you need to. So um, I think we have what we need to make our book. So I just want to go through putting it together quickly. And uh, that would be it. All right, so we have our two covers. So this is how it works. Let's make sure these all poked out. Yes, they did. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell on this surface here. But what we wound up with are two covers, all right? And we have them going in opposite directions. All right, so see, one is going, this is our front, and that's our back. We can tell because it's upside down. When we go to put it together, we're just going to rotate that around and line up these holes and our binding, and then we have our book. I'm going to cover my back like that. So that's going to make our book. Oh, I hadn't, sorry, I hadn't scored that one. What I do is I take this and I lay this over the table and fold it that way because you want to apply direct pressure, um, you know, equal pressure on either end. You don't want this lifting up. Um, this mat board is, heavy, you know, it's layer on layer on layer paper. And if you lift one up, and don't do it down here. This can separate, which you don't want to do. Okay, so we have our front and back covers. We're going to put this together. Now, let me just tell you one thing about the spine. It's adjustable. So say you just want like um, a very skinny spine. I don't know if you can see here, but you have three little like um, divisions here, little spines. So if you just want a skinny spine you just cut two of these off right here and you have the one left and then do the same over here and you would overlap them so you would have a spine just like that thick you know which is maybe not even half an inch um, if you wanted two you could cut one spine off and have the overlap of two which is about that wide i usually do this one this is a little, little over an inch you know that's the three but you can also do four, make it bigger, or five, which comes out to, I think this is two inches. Yeah, two inch spine, almost. So you have a lot of options for that, depending on what you want to put in here, okay? So uh, for today, I'm just going to cover this with uh, three rows of adhesive. And if you watch the show on Create and Craft, that's what uh, Sharon did. You know, they're just easier. It's like, it's pretty strong if you overlap all of it. So just cut this, you know, put three down. If you have thicker tape, you can use that. You could use uh, glue too, but for the sake of the video, it's just faster to do the tape. I kind of messed that up a little. That's all right. And then one more. So, and then I also do just, you don't want to cover this, these uh, holes because that's where you're going to thread your elastic through. So put them at the bottom too because you don't want, want them ripping up from the bottom just to be safe. And then when you put your, your elastic on, it will also help to reinforce your your spine to keep it together okay so on my backing I have added my tape and then I'm just gonna go ahead and lift that off make sure you burnish that 
Probably bone folder would have been a good idea. Sometimes it's not cooperative. This stuff is really sticky though. That's why I like it. Uh oh. There we go. And then this red stuff sticks to your hand all the time. Yeah, I should have burnished that. It's not wanting to come up. Now I'm going to stick to it. See, this is like the easiest thing, and it won't work. Come on. Give me a break. I'm sweating for my grandchild. She was so good, though. We went to Joanne's. So we have a brand new Joanne's, and, and my daughter hadn't seen it yet. So she wanted some jewelry pieces, and uh, so we went in there with her, and she was great. And, you know, she's a little squirmy right around now. Kind of lost my voice too. A lot of talking. <laughs> okay, so now this is all ready to go. Does the red tape, the red tape is extremely sticky. I've never seen it come off, which is sometimes a bad thing. That's right. Unless you have undo, which Maggie told us about, and that will take it off. I'm pretty sure. All right, now I'm just lining up these holes. They're easier to see than those score lines. But try to get them pretty much perfect because you're going to be putting thick elastic through here. All right, so now you got to cover. And you could have covered the inside too, but just, you know, I should have picked better paper because behind this background it's really kind of hard to see. Wasn't thinking so hot today, but all right, so now let's do our elastic. So what I did was I cut a piece that is about two feet long. Um, this could be wrong, but we'll find out. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I do that, and then we'll talk about the insert books and all that. Okay, so this is 1.5 millimeter elastic. You could use 2 inch elastic too. Depends on hev how heavy the books that you're going to put in here are. So I'm just going to talk while we do this. So I'm going to pull this through, and I pull it about halfway down. And then what you're going to do is take your elastic and do all of your outer strings going horizontally and your inside strings going vertically, okay? Because we want to put our books in there. And then you're just going to match up the holes, go back and forth. I always buy white elastic, well, I buy white or black elastic because I, you can dye this with your inks if you want to color. And sometimes, like on something like this, I might try to kind of vintage that up a little bit and do a brown or something. All right, now here's the secret weapon. This is a, a well-loved bamboo skewer. And what we're gonna do, because when we start coming back, we, we've done all the holes going across, and now we wanna do it so that we wind up with four strings. And that means we're going to have two, one in the middle, and a, we'll have two in the middle and single ones on either side. And that's how this winds up. There's other ways you can do it too. But as you can see, if I come back here, I'm going to have to go into that hole again. You can use your pokey tool, but sometimes the, the um, metal is too slick and it won't help poke it through. So the wood from the bamboo is just perfect. So I'm also going to kind of tighten up my strings here. You don't want them too tight or too loose. So, all right, that looks good. So I'm going to take that one and push that through. Okay, that one was easy. And then we're going to bring that over here. And we're just going to tie it up. Oh, we had plenty. All right, and then we're just going to tie this red tape. My thing is not advancing here. Sometimes what weather will affect any tape. Yeah. All right, and do like a square knot. I'm not doing one right now. I'm just doing a double knot, but square knot works best. And tighten it. And because I uh, actually, I should have made sure. Let's undo this. Um, this is a little bit loose. You want them 
tight enough, but not too tight. I should not have uh, tightened that as much as I did because now it's going to be a pain. But if it's too loose, the books are going to flop around, and that's not good. I could probably, oh, I think I'm just going to cut it because I'm not going to be able to get that untied. Let's hope that it's going to work. All right, let's see See how loose this one is? That's too loose. So I'm going to pull that. You want them all about the same, but fairly tight. <laughs> now I have to do this again. But that'll help me to get this together. See, these look pretty good. That one's a little loose. Ugh. I've only strung about five million of these. Okay. Hopefully I have enough because there is nothing worse and you guys have watched me and I know you are just grimacing. So this might be a little tight. <laughs> God help me. What a day. All right. Still, I'm happy to be home because sleeping in my car was a rude surprise of how, what a baby I am. All right, please, please let me tie you. Don't let that happen to you. Make sure you have plenty of stuff to tie. All right, there we go. All right, that's just about perfect. Okay, sorry not to belabor this, but am I still even on here? Yeah, okay. All right, sweating again. Okay, so now we have our book strung. And, you know, if you wanted to start over here and have your, your knot over there, it doesn't really matter. And I do trim these off once I get them right. Uh, another way that you can do this is just cut four or three individual, you know, wraps and tie each one. But then you have more knots. So I like this method the best. So the next thing that we can talk about is the insert books. Here are a couple that I have found. This one is really pretty, I think. Um, this was at, I think, Tuesday morning. And they're all going to fit different ways, but you can lay them inside and, you know, they pretty much all fit. There's some that are extra big and those don't, but... You know, this one you're going to have, let's do this one, because this is from the Dollar Tree. And this one I like because you got two in one pack for a dollar, and this one fits in another journal. So um, let me show you how to do like a taller book, because you can see this is, you know, taller than the, the size of the page. But actually the most of them have pretty good covers you know they're sturdy enough and they will be fine once you put them in the book so that one is bigger but it stretches and that's the beauty of elastic so if you you know fill fill it out or you don't like it or you want to rip a page out or you want to work in it whatever you just pull it in and out and this is like a traveler's notebook style these are some other ones I found I think I think this was in Dollar Tree, but I'm not sure. This was a kind of different style. I'm not sure how this would go because it's not as, it's not stitched in, you know what I mean? Although you can see that it is, um, that's about halfway. Um, it does work, but it's it doesn't lay flat really. I guess you could make it lay flat, but I do like the stitched in ones a little better. But, I mean, Sharon had one, and she called it a diary, but it's the same kind of idea. I like the cover of this book, but I don't like the covered pages, you know, with all this stuff. But still, you could use that to kind of, um, as an art journal, you know, you could tape in pages or or color over that, you know, use your, your um, gel plate or something like that to add stuff inside. So you can use this for a planner. You can use it for a junk journal. You can use it for an art journal, a calendar, uh, just notes. Like, I have a list every day of all the stuff I have to do, which is 
not happening today, but <laughs> sometimes it does. Um, again, you can customize the outside if you wanted to add a date or someone's name or a saying on here um, that you could do. And then if you want to add this piece, uh, let's just do this so you can see. Um, let's put some books in. Let's use, let's open these up. Even though I was saving them for a rainy day, let's just test them out in here. And, you know, I'll show you how fast they load up. So this is an A5. So the U.S. is not quite as, uh, you know, tight with the names of our sizes. I mean, we just make them in all different. Oh, this is a bullet journal. See, I didn't know that. So you just slip them in, and then if you have to adjust the height of them a little bit, it's easy to do. So you can either put this with two elastics or one and leave one for later. You might want to put some kind of little pocket or a protector or something. And then uh, here's the last one. Aren't they pretty? They don't necessarily go with what the cover is, but that's all right. You get the idea. So there they are. And that is a nice little looking book, don't you think? All right. I thought you were brave. I'm not sure that what that went to. <laughs> okay, now I do not have my crocodile down here, but what I would probably do is I would punch a hole and attach that either with a brad or an eyelet to the back of my book. And I would want to do that to keep that backing secure. You could put it on the outside or you could put it on the inside, however you want to do it. I mean, if it's a really fat book, you might have to put it on the inside just to get it around to the front. So let's do that. Let's just glue it in there and we can always reinforce it later because it's on the inside. All right, so I'm just going to do that for now. Uh, And because I don't have my crocodile down here, it's still out in the car. So just make sure that you have room to kind of bring this around. You know, don't sink it too, too much in there. Leave a little bit of that fold. You see what I mean, how that is? Because that's got to get around this top here. You know what I mean? You could just line it up. Okay. So then the other piece is this one. And what I do with that sometimes, even if it's mat board. Now, when you're making your um, latches and all of this stuff, I like to use my Sizzix surfaces. And the reason is that it bends nicely and it doesn't ever degrade. You know, like now this mat board, it is going to come apart at some point. Any paper is just going to break down. But the surfaces are kind of like a, they almost have a rubbery feel to them. And they have some give, and they will not do that. So that's what I like to use those for. All right, so once you have this latch on, then you know where to put your little, um, I don't know what you call it, closure, I guess. Uh, and then what I would do is just kind of mark that, punch holes, just allow this little cover here to slide through. So don't put it too close. Well, don't put it too far away, I guess is what I would say, because it may not catch. If you made a real fat book, there is enough to kind of bend this around for a larger book, you know what I mean, to make that wider, but I'm not gonna use that this time. So then what I would do is mark these two holes. I would put brads in here and I would kind of squish that up a little bit so that the thickness of this, if you're using mat board or leather or something pretty deep, uh, will be able to fit through. Um, but not too much so that it doesn't hold it down securely, okay? So that is the latch, which I don't have my crocodile, so I can't punch the holes, but you get the idea. And then the other last piece is this little kind of charm which what I like to do is get a jump ring and attach the jump ring up here, or you could put it on a chain, or you could put all kinds of little things, or, you know, use that in the center for a name again, or maybe you want to use your 
um, metal stamps or leather stamps to kind of make an impression on that. There's all different ways that you can use this. Now, I don't think that I didn't put a center hole in here, but another way to make a closure, I guess because I did this one, uh, but if you wanted, you could get a big bite or you could use your crocodile before you put this together, punch a hole in the middle or wherever it is that you want your elastic to be, and then take your elastic, knot it together, you know, feel how strong you want that to be, how, how, uh, what, that you want the tension to be on your cover. This is probably going to be too short, but just to give you an idea, you would open this up to the middle. You'd have your holes punched. This knot is going to hold it inside the book. Thread this through the cover and then pull that out. And then you have your elastic closure instead of this other one. Okay. So let me see if there are questions. Anything better? Oh, to coat. Well, now the other thing you can do is you can use Mod Podge or the Deco the Deco Art decoupage glue to kind of seal this. You could laminate it, you know, with the dry laminator where you don't have to put it through the um, hot laminator. You you can just buy it and it sticks on and trim it. Uh, what else? Oh, I didn't do the big shot. I'm glad you said that. Okay, these are the machines that work that I know of so far. The first three are Sizzix machines. The Big Shot Plus, which we use today, the Big Shot Pro, which is a 12 inch machine. It is big, it's like 47 pounds. I have one, but it's on its own cart. It's huge, but you could. And then the switch. This, this one is not out yet, but hopefully the beginning of next year. Okay. And then I heard today from someone in the group that Couture Creations cut and emboss works. And also Maggie has said the Spellbinders Platinum will work to cut this die. Okay. There's a couple others, but they're a little bit too, too uh, narrow. So that is uh, something to think about. You do need a uh, a big machine to cut this, okay? Um, all right, let me go make sure that I have given you my tips. Texture roll on flexible pieces, yes. Mark, mark front and back for directional patterns. Foam over holes, elastic, 1.5 to two millimeter. The books, adjustable spine, did that. What to cut and where to find materials. Okay, that is um, one thing that you We'll have to do a little research for, uh, depending on where you live, but if you can't find them, you can use these. I sell them in my Etsy store, and I pre-cut them and have them available for you. I'm, I myself if am having trouble fi finding a good source for my mat board because Sizzix doesn't sell them, so you have to find another place. Um, you can go to a frame shop. You can use other things, but... Um, as far as mat board, uh, as soon as I can find another, uh, source, I will have more of these for you, but the price may be different because I am not able to get them from my wholesale place. Um, uh, they just, I think with COVID, they just had trouble, you know, with people were not out matting and framing photos and they have limited stuff. So anyway, um, that is kind of a, um, I'm looking into that, but uh, I do have some other ones that are packages, but I have limited supplies because, uh, you know, I can't find it. It drives me crazy. Anyway, that is what's going on. Amazon has map board in different sizes. That's good. You're right behind me. <laughs> oh, hey, Kimberly. Yes, go shopping for notebooks at Dollar Tree Map Books. Okay, Dorothy, you have a regular big shot. I'm sorry, it's not going to work. But you could get one of these and try it out if you love it. You know, you can always try and um, save up for another machine. Big Shot Plus is the 9-inch machine that we use today. You can cut pretty much everything with that, except the 12-inch dies. Those are huge, and there just are not a lot of them out there these days. 
Graphics medium weight chipboard. Okay, I did use the heavy weight. I do like the heavier weight, but you can use whatever you want. Now, when you add your paper or other substances to the front of the book, that does beef it up a little. So a medium weight plus adhesive plus paper might be a great one. Um, you can also cut like that. Uh, I don't think we have a sample in this, but it's like a, a thick interfacing and Lisa Hole, I don't know if you're here, but you buy that by the yard. And so you could do that and sandwich in uh, that with fabric or, you know, they're just the, it's the endless possibilities as always, um, you know, and I hope that you'll join the fan club, Eileen Hall fan club, go in, make sure and answer the questions because we're going to be doing a lot of experimenting. Can you tell us how you did your embossing folder? Yes. Let me just show you, Candace, it's kind of a more of a, uh, uh, let me see if I have my folder. Ah, I brought it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Here's the folder. Now see, I'm going to show you, I made a mistake here, not a mistake, but I just didn't do it the best. You can see here where this folder ended. All right. So that's the back. It didn't matter. So I just flipped it to make it the back. Um, on the front, what I did was, and it takes a little lining up, I will say, what you do is you take your cover and you lay this on here. And I really was kind of happy with how that line came in. It was like I made it, I wanted it to happen, but it's just really this line right here in the folder. And this is the sweater folder. This will be coming in this week on Thursday. So I will be listing that again in the Etsy store. We ran out. I'm sorry about that. So, okay, here's what you do. You take your cutting pad and this is, you know, you got to cut this on, you have to run this through on the Big Shot Plus, okay? Um, because this is wide. It's sticking out. So what you do is you take your cutting pad and when you're rolling this through, you know, it'll be like this. Put this cutting pad just shy of the end. And then when you get to that point, you know, you're going to have to back it in and out a little bit. And you can kind of feel when it's almost going to go over. Don't go over. Roll it back and roll it out. Then you're going to take this folder and you're going to have like no mark there. You're going to match it up, you know, as best as you can. And you're going to do the same thing. Put your folder a little bit shy of the end here so that when, you know, and don't roll over it. Because what happens is when you do roll over it, this end piece presses in and that's what makes your lines. So you have to practice a little, but it does work because I did it. I mean, I did it with that folder right on the front here. Okay, it can be done. Now see, look at how big that one is. I think these are Tuesday morning. And they are a little big, but I like the lines on it. And, you know, it does fit. So you can you really have a lot of leeway. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was, say you want to make your own pages, okay? Your own book. Here is 8.5 by 11 paper. You fold it in half. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> it's almost as though I planned it this way, but I didn't. All right, I'm going to take a book out. It's this simple. Taking 8.5 by 11 paper, and you might want to reinforce your cover because uh, this is big and it's going to be tight going through here. Now, if you want another way to do your spine, uh, your elastic, so it's a little bit taller, check out um, Angela, or I mean Sharon's uh, video where she restrings it in a different way. All right, see, it's not gonna work because I I would use like a file folder to stiffen this spine or a really sturdy, you know, plus I might not make these so tight <laughs> like I did, but you will see that this fits in here too. You know, see how it's a little taller, but that will fit perfectly inside. And the nice thing is if you have a little bit of leeway here, you can put a pen in here too. You can also use this piece here. If you cut it out of a flexible material, you can use that for your pen loop. Um, like I did on the leather one. Actually, I used the shorter, 
I use this piece and I just put one in here, wrapped it around and use that for a pen loop. So you can use that for more than one thing. If you want the longer one, you can use the longer one. So you can chop it, do whatever you want. Okay, you have all the pieces. So I have been talking a long time. What weight of leather did I use? Okay, this is a, yeah, this is a whole other class working with leather. But this is a chrome tanned, I think this is probably a three ounce leather. And this one I backed with the surfaces. If I did it again, I would probably use the other side of it because this is the rose gold. And I would probably, because it's leather, it seems kind of shiny, I would have used the other side, which is craft, you know, just to make it look more organic. But then again, it's kind of, you know, reflects this, killing it. Anyway, I don't know. That was just the book that I had and, you know, it filled it up. Because I was, this is the packaging for the die. Of course, I was waiting till the last minute to do it. And those were the books I had. So, uh, and it was leather. It was, um not kid or deer because it holds up nicely. Hey, Alice Walls, you just learned the name for each one of those info. Yes, yeah, signatures, correct, yeah. You can cut a bin in the middle of the paper. So yes, that's a good idea, Kathleen, yeah. So what she's talking about is, you know, if that was too, where did that paper go? You know, you could just cut like a little notch in here. I usually do that with my, um, my whole my corner rounder and just it makes it so that the, the elastic just slips right back into that like that little notch you know but we were working with <laughs> we were working with a two-year-old today so didn't have all of the normal stuff and also my brain not working so hot <laughs> but anyway yes thank you glum what is surfaces? Surfaces are the material. Uh, it's in the roll, Kim. I don't know if I've shown that. I don't have any right here, but uh, well, it looks like this. This is one that I did another folder. This is what it looks like. So it's a metallic front and a craft back. So you could use either side. So see, what I was saying was I would use that side. It just looks more like leather, really. So yeah, see, Jen likes the gold metallic. I like that, you know, well for this, I do like it. You know, you could do a cover out of that. You could take two pieces of this and back it with the adhesive. So you have two pieces of it and that would be strong enough, I bet you, for a nice cover. So maybe we'll do that on one of our samples. Really pleased to have it journalized so easy to fill with standard notebook. I know. And Allison, even if you're in the UK, your A4 paper is going to work just as well inside. So, because it's only a couple, you know, millimeters off the eight and a half by 11. Yes. I do have some in my shop, Kim. Not a lot. I ordered it and it's coming in on Thursday. Okay, Christy Sparks, you're a winner. Christy, you won. Hey, congratulations. So yeah, uh, text me your uh, mailing information, okay? Or message me, uh, Christy. Actually, I have you because you buy stuff from my Etsy store. So just, uh, I will send it to you. I'm waiting until Thursday, though, because I don't have the next shipment yet. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? Sorry, that was somewhat disjointed. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right, well, guys, I've gone over my time, thanks to Catherine, <laughs> but I'm glad you got to meet her and see her, and we will have a lot more videos coming um, on this die and the others in Chapter 4, but uh, I'm just kind of in town. I'm I'm leaving again to go to my mom's. We're having her yard sale this, or her estate sale, excuse me, sounds much better, more fancy, this weekend, and... Um, so I need to go up there and make sure that they're not giving away the stuff that we still have and want. So uh, another trip to New York, but that's all right because it's almost almost done. So uh, anyway, okay, thanks, Jan. Uh, yes, oh, thanks, Angela. And I'm thinking on Thursday I will open your box, Angela, okay? I can't wait. It's killing me. I have it sitting right here. 
and it's heavy and I don't know what's in it, but I can't wait to see. So we'll um, see you again on Thursday and that one will be at four o'clock. Oh, A5. Okay. Yeah. The A5 book made your third trip. Yes. Okay. Janine. Yeah. You, you understand. Did I, what the, I'm in back so I can see how it's attached. Okay, this one is, um, I did with Brad's because I had my crocodile on hand. This one I glued, and this one I did to the back side because, uh, how did I do that? I don't know why I did it that way. I just did. Um, this one I glued on the inside. You can do it either way. And you could probably want to punch a hole and still reinforce that so it stays. Because this is the main... Uh, piece that's going to keep your book together. Okay. Hey, Rizwana. Pen loops, eyelets, or breads. Hold them on well. Yes, crocodile. Mine is up at the room. Uh, say hi to mom. I will. Okay, Knoxville. Yes, hopefully. Oh, 1,400 miles. Oh, Janine. Yeah, this is this is 325, and that's plenty. <laughs> uh, but I'll be happy to be done. <sighs> Anyway, all right, guys, I will see you on Thursday, and thanks so much for watching. I hope that you uh, have fun with this. If you do make one, please post it in the fan club so we can see what you're making, and any tips that you have, we're happy to see too. All right, so we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for coming. Bye.